Hi guys, this is Ronnie Fernandez, uh, LCSW licensed clinical therapist, and I'm here with uh, Joel Gutierrez. And uh, Joel, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Tell me a little bit about your background and uh, and what you're working on. Sure. My name is uh, Joel or Joel Gutierrez. Uh, currently, I serve uh, as the associate director for student involvement at Loyola Marymount University. So I work in higher education. Uh, prior to that, I was a director for Chicano Latino Student Services at the same university. I'm um, also uh, finishing up a, a PhD program, so a doctoral program at Chapman University uh, in education, focuses on culture and curriculum studies. So my research focuses on uh, Latinx masculinity, particular um, undergraduate men and how they make meaning of their masculinity. And I'm also, uh, Ronnie and I graduated uh, in her <laughs> social work program in 2013. Yeah, yeah, and that's why we kind of came together because we're kind of working on the same thing, um, you know. Uh, you know, where I, f I focus on men, and you're you're and and um, you know masculinity, and and so are you, you know, and and you're kind of honed down on the Latino um, uh, uh, masculinity. So I just thought it would be a great discussion because, man, it just it just sounds so interesting when we started talking. Like we got to put this on tape, man. <laughs> I would agree. I would agree. I think I think there's a lot of parallels, especially when you talk about masculinity. Uh, manhood, fatherhood, boyhood, like there's a lot of things and some of it is particular to Latinx community, Latinos, some of it's not, some of it's particular to men of color, you know, so let's get in. Let's, let's have right, a conversation. Man. So let me know, well, what are you working on? Let me, what, what's your yeah. so, about? Uh, originally when I started the program four years ago, I wanted to focus something on the Latinx culture. And at that time uh, in higher ed, at least in a lot of these universities and social activism, the term Latinx came about and we now know and you know, maybe some people know more, but um, the term Latinx is a kind of a gender fluid terminology. When you look at Latino, it's male, masculine and oriented. And you look at Latina, it's female oriented. So a lot of particular colleges, universities, social activist groups were really trying to focus on the non-gender binary of the language, right? So um, that led me down a road of gender norms within our community how we portray them, how we operationalize them, how we play to them in our day to day. And then of course, in any research, you got to funnel down to a main point. So right now what I started doing uh, as of last year was really looking at how college going, so 18 to 22 year olds or 25, uh, Latino, Latinx men make meaning of their masculinity. Um, so where does it come from? What, what are their thoughts? What are their ideas? What are the art types? You know, is it is it so familial that they get it from their fathers? Is it you know, is masculinity kind of that machismo stereotype that we have? What is that machismo stereotype? Um, so what I did, and it's still in the works, so I'm, I'm uh, finished all my courses, I'm doing the data. I interviewed uh, seven gentlemen for a period, and, and you know, even in the Latino men, that was an interesting framework, right? So men don't talk through interview. I think we know that, right? Like yeah. get men in, in therapy or even just to research, like let's have an interview. So I didn't call them that. I said, you know, vamos a platicar. Like, let's just chat. Um, so even in my research, I don't call them interviews. I call them platicas, uh, which might be a little different, right? But that's the terminology that I chose to use. Um, you know, vamos a juntar and chilar and, you know, hablar. Like, that's just what we're going to do. We're going to chill. So yeah. I met these gentlemen, um, you know, in the coffee shop at our, our local, at our university. I met them in my office. Some of them, I, you know, we just had dinner, you know, because they were going through class or through through conversations or through organization meetings. So it was when they wanted to meet. Um, and they ranged from like an hour to two hours. We chatted, we talked. Um, very non-formal structure of, I didn't have specific questions like, tell me about a time when this happened. But it was more like, so how's your day, dude? What's going on? And that led to deeper conversations about roles and masculinity. Um, so I used a lot of my social work skills uh, in therapy to kind of get that. So what I have now is this, you know, beautiful data of all these stories, all these ideas, all these concepts and how these men think of their masculinity. And it's, it's all different. It's all different for these five gentlemen. Um, and, and there's different ways in which they form. There's different ways in which they, they, they create it. And it's, there's different struggles. So one of the themes that's coming out just on the data is that for these five men living in 2020 and, you know, around the 21st century, they understand that there's a new notion of masculinity, that you don't have to, you know, uh, be this tough guy. They understand it, but how they operationalize that in a relationship is very difficult. Yeah. So, yeah. So two gentlemen have, uh, have significant others. 
uh, and they have relationships. And one of the gentlemen, his story that I'm going to include in my research is, you know, I, and he's telling me this, he's like, I get it that my woman, you know, she, she's getting her master's in Stanford. She's a, a grown ass educated Latina and I support that. So, you know, we have conversations of roles and stuff, but every once in a while she's like, well, why didn't you challenge me on this? Or why didn't you back me up this way? Or why didn't you do that? And he's like, I thought I was trying to keep you independent. And yeah. that was the whole conversation we had, he's like, it's confusing. And I think that's one of the themes is that during this kind of new era of what men are, there's a lot of confusion for young men. Yes. It's yeah. very, it's very confusing. It, and and uh, for, for me, it is definitely because, you know, um, you know, my wife, she's, she's an attorney. And so being able to shift the roles, you know what I'm saying? Where, you know, I'm the social worker, therapist, she's, she's the attorney, you know, and it's just like, where is that balance at? You know, when, yeah. when do I be, you know, when should I be strong? When should I try to kind of lean back? When should I use my, you know, <laughs> the stuff that I've learned in school when do I don't do it and get that out of the window and so it 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 is it is very confusing and it's been a, a process you know and you know when me and my wife met it was you know I didn't have a a, a, a bachelor's or master's or, or anything and how that worked out was was very difficult you know and wow. the expectations on women as well you know I think on women now they're supposed to be strong but yes but again other you know uh, and caring too so it's it's difficult yeah i think i think there's a lot in that and let's be clear like like for me i can't talk about masculinity without talking about femininity without talking about gender roles and that's really what my research is well i'm mm. focusing now just for the dissertation and just to get this program done on just men i i have to look at it from a whole thing and that's what you're talking about right in particular to you know gender roles so so I don't know if you know, but we graduated in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't land a job till 2014. So I was like, we graduated in May and I share this story a lot. So my wife's okay with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. We graduated in May. Uh, I got married in August to my wife and then we bought a house in October. Uh, so very much, boom, but I still didn't have a job till January, 2014. So I was wow. unemployed for all that time. And then there was a lot of uh, and I, I'm typically, I would consider myself a non-macho guy, like, you know, yeah. I'm very open to different ideas. And even that's like, as I say, that's stereotypical, like, what is a macho guy and what's not? But we kind of can have yeah. an understanding, right? Yeah. What macho yeah. men are, um, you know, I'm very, you know, um, talkative, expressive emotions. We're social workers, damn it. Like, we know yeah. what the hell we're doing. <laughs> but here it was six months, nine months without a job. And I was at home while my wife was earning the bread, while my yeah. wife was going to work. And I would come home and I'd try to have dinner ready for her or, um, you know, the kitchen is a woman's space, right? And, and it, our early relationship, we're like, no, we're both gonna clean, we're both gonna do that. So I packed and we just moved. So I put all the stuff away in the kitchen and she came home and she was furious. She didn't talk to me for like three hours. And I was like, I don't understand what's going on. Yeah. So finally she was like, yo, and again, different roles, right? Like I'm used to like, if we got a problem, let's talk it out. She's yeah. like, I don't have a problem with you. I just need my time. Very male oriented. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So yeah. then I, we finally figured out. She's like, look, like I know you're home all day, but I wanted to do the kitchen because I think that's my space. I'm like, so even gender roles in a progressive family come together. So we had to learn through that. Um, and, and I was getting some very much like male oriented, you're a piece of shit, like you can't work, like in my own head. Like, yeah. It was, it, and that's never had that. It, it tripped me up. So to your point, I think, I think gender roles are very real and they're very confusing no matter your education, no matter your experiences, you're going to experience that because we all live in a societal kind of complex where they're there, they're normified, you know, they're there, they're, they're, they're out there. So, and with my research, these men are struggling with that. Like, how do I fit that into my new role? Yeah, no, abs absolutely. Like I, I, you know, when I was in school, I didn't work. You know what I mean? Like, so, so Joanne, you know, my wife was just, the one that was working you yeah. know, and I was going to school and go navigating through that was was really difficult you know like whose role is what and we had just gotten married yeah. and so it, it it was it was it was really tough you know it, it was yeah. it was a really and just trying to see who's going to do what and and then this you know what I should do as a man what should I do as a husband all those type of things come into play but it, it and, and you I think it's hard to, to judge like what do I need to do as a man to feel manly? And what are some of the things that I, that I think I'm supposed to do? 
Yes. And, right. and that's difficult. Yeah, because we have like, you know, like especially with masculinity, right? Like you, you read books and you see if there's a lot of <clears throat> new kind of things, but even like, um, like the traditional man of like, you know, no sissy stuff, no, the, you know, like no crying, no, no, no feminine objects. Like that's manly, right? Like, yeah, not a sissy, he's not a wuss. Then you have yeah. like, you know, the other part of like, you got to be strong and, and like the sturdy oak, like that's yeah. manly, right? Like, yeah. And yeah. Then, stoic. Like, yes. Yeah, stoic. The other yeah, part of very, yeah, man yeah. is, uh, you know, you, you got to go for what you are. It's all competitive nature. It's all yeah. like, you know, part of my friends, but it's all fuck everybody else. It's all about you. Right. Yeah. So these well, go, for me, these go very contrary to a social work degree. Yeah. Oh, very. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember, and uh, I don't know, my, my grandfather recently passed away and, and, oh, you know, you look through that, different bro. pictures. Yeah. You look through pictures and you, you remember stuff. And I always remember the picture of John Wayne I had a picture of John Wayne on, on there. And that was what I thought a man was. You know what I mean? And you, you had the at photo it. of John Wayne. Yeah. Yeah. He had a photo of John Wayne in, in the, in the hallway of their house. And my grandfather was a lot like that. Very stoic, went to work, man. Whatever happened the day before, he got up and went to work. And that was your responsibility. You know what I mean? So did you know John Wayne's not his real name? Yeah. What's Isn't that crazy? Name? I don't know his real name, but what is his real name? I, I was just looking at it, but it's uh, Morin Michael Morrison. Yeah. And, and if you look at him, and I see, I, I remember this because we talked about this, and I forgot who I was talking about this, but John Wayne is your quintessential American man, right? Like him is like, it's mm -hmm. like Clint Eastwood. Yeah, right? yeah. John Wayne is a character, and Michael Moore, Moore, uh, Murray and Michael Morrison wore suits and got his nails done and had, you know, this beautiful hair. So it's yeah. very interesting to think, like, John Wayne is your, your idol, but even the guy who played John Wayne wasn't yeah. your typical man. Yeah, and I never saw a John Wayne movie. <laughs> yeah, right? Right? But we, <laughs> neither did I, but we know what the hell John Wayne is. But again... I say that because that's how ingrained this American and even Latino masculinity mm -hmm. is, right? Because yeah. like, while, while these gentlemen I interviewed, they may not know who John Wayne is because we're older, um, yeah. but they have some pretty poignant things. Like, you know, um, another story that one of the men shared was that his uncle got married and, and he remembers like, you know, um, at, the, at the wedding, he was younger. I think he was like in his teens. His uncle got married. His grandfather came up to him and, you know, the, the, the student, the, my participant, my hermanitos. I call them my, my little hermanitos because that's yeah. what we did. We created so much, so yeah. much bond that we're, they're just like my brothers. Um, he was crying because it was just a beautiful thing. And his grandfather looks at him and he goes, gives him a tequila and says, you know, we don't do that. No yeah. paso. Like, you know, like we, we, don't, we don't cry, bro. We celebrate. I'm like, wow. Yeah. So at a wedding of a family, the emotion is not to cry. The emotion is to keep on drinking your tequila. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's very, like, that's ingrained in, in the culture, that's ingrained in the manhood, that's ingrained in, in whatever you're at, not just American, but Mexican, and even Salvadoreño, yeah. and all that stuff. Everything, like, man, I mean, if, we're, if I called you up, hey, man, I'm having a rough time, hey, let's go grab a beer, right? I mean, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> exactly. Let's go exactly. grab a beer. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's how we talk shit out, right? That's how we do. That's how we yeah. talk it out, yeah. Yeah, That's why no. for me, it was very clear that I, I'm not going to go do these interviews with these guys. I'm like, yeah, I just want to talk with you, man. What do you want to talk? You want to get some food? You want to get something? Because I had to create it comfortable for them too. Yeah. Right? And, and that's what you have to do. In order to talk about these bigger issues, you have to create some comfort for the individual. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, through, through, even through my research and stuff that I, that I try to do for, for, um, for my practice was, you know, the big thing is that men don't do therapy. You know what I mean? Like, how, how, how am I going to be able to talk to men you know what I mean and and especially the ones that don't want to be there you know and 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 even doing with these with the pod you know the podcasts that I do is that you kind of have to I don't know well I mean I started the podcast because I knew men didn't talk so right. how how are we gonna get them to talk you know so well let me let me put some stuff out there and having men talk and how do I get other men to do a podcast tell them you know ask them what was their greatest victory how were they able to get over the challenges, right? Oh wow! So I was reading this book, and, and uh, um, and there's because there's not a lot of a lot of books about men's mental health, but it's, it says when do you see men cry? When when they win a Super Bowl, when they win something, they were able to overcome a challenge, and then mm. they were like, it's over, and then boom, then the tears come, and then everything, then it's okay because you accomplished something, 
And so that's why I started the podcast was to to have a space where they're able to do it. And you can listen to the podcast and you'll see you'll see and hear men get, you know, get emotional yeah. and talk about it and all that kind of stuff. But that's where you have to come you have to come in strong. Like what was the best what was the great thing that you overcome overcame? Tell me about that. How were you able to do that? And then you work down. You know? Wow. So, I've heard some of your podcasts and I've heard some of the shows. I, I think uh, one of the one I liked, I think it was one of the first ones where you're meeting with the former mayor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, Mario, yeah. 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 That was the one I liked because to your, I didn't realize at the time you just synthesized it because he's talking about a challenge. Yeah. And he's talking about how it's done. I think you found a way to decode <laughs> men. <laughs> for, for real. I mean, I, I think about it because even I go back to some of the interviews that I've done with these guys and we're talking about challenges. We're talking about like, I don't know how to get through my girlfriend. We're talking about, I don't know how to, how to excel in this part or yeah, this part was weird for me or, you know, I didn't grow up with a father. So my mother, yeah. but now my mom's tripping because I'm in California and she's in New Mexico and, and I'm not going to church, you know, like yeah. it's something really interesting. Um, but I think you found a decoding in that because that's, you're absolutely right. I would say that, you know, men don't listen, uh, sorry, men, men don't talk, but we listen. Yeah. And, and that's the thing we're all listening, but nobody's talking and you got, you got to get this stuff out. You got to get these things out because I thought, I thought this would be very difficult. I thought this would be difficult to get, you know, five to seven, 18 to 24 year olds and have them talk for me for an hour for a week, you know, for like, you know, six weeks. It was easy. Yeah. And, and I don't know, and I'm not saying this in all humility. I don't know if it was just that they did feel comfortable with me. Cause that's the other thing I think. Yeah. Cause you know, like Ronnie, you and I are cool. We go way back there's a comfort there because we've had these conversations before, yeah. right? So like, I, that's what I'm curious to you is when you meet new men and you do new work with it, what's that comfort? So I'll come back to that, yeah. right? But I think, I think that's the other thing that I noticed that I think men want to talk about these conversations. They want yeah. to, do, they don't want to do it in their oh, homes. Man. Yeah. Con, con la familia. They don't want to do it in a big group, but they yeah. want to talk to other men who get them about the shit that's going on. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. It's, uh, it's, it's crazy, man. Once you, you know, close that door or once you, or even like even sitting out, sitting with a bunch of friends or even just with one friend and you tell them well, what's going on, man. Or, or like, just, yeah, especially if they know you're a therapist, you know, they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll spew, spew it out, man. And, and whether then, you like it or not. No, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> and I mean, I love story. And that's why, that's why I'm a, I'm a, you know, I wanted to be a therapist. Yeah. Was, it's just like this, once they sit down, for 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 the majority for the majority of the men it's usually or they'll ask about my background you know where i came from we're just kind of like whatever we'll just kind of start a conversation first but i mean i think that's all it is man i don't see it as much of a challenge as we think i think i don't know i mean we'll probably get into this later but even you know um just how uncomfortable people are when men share their feelings yeah. their reaction Yes. Especially, I think even especially with women, you know what I mean? They'll yes. say, oh, you can cry during a movie or whatever, but when stuff goes down and you see a man cry, man, I mean, it, it's like, holy crap, this is real. You know what I mean? Like, like, so we're supposed to like hold it because, you know, most women are very emotional and, and they'll kind of go there and it's like, okay, we, I need to stay focused and just stay here. And, you know, they'll go all over the place and you kind of bring it down in most, in most cases, not all the time, but in most cases. And so I think we're kind of, we're really good at that, you know, but I think with some, when we say that we're really good at holding emotions, you know, it's, it's the whole like live by the sword, die by the sword type of thing where we're going to re, you know, we're going to do it too much, you know? So I, I don't know. That's my, my opinion on that, man. No. And I, I think you're right. Cause that, that goes to the whole I'm processing all you're saying. Cause I would agree with you, right? Like there's, there's on one hand, because you see it then, right? You see the comfortability that men have talking to other men about what's going on. And whether it's because we're therapists, right? Or we have, like for me, I have a, uh, I have a therapeutic background. I don't, I don't do therapy right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we're, we're trained, right? We're trained. Yeah. We have, but also we have a desire. Like you said, I love it. Like you like stories. That's why you became a therapist. On the other hand, we have this kind of societal notion that men are supposed to be these big rocks. And what happens when yeah. the rock crumbles, we get we get defensive, we get scared, we get, 
you know, nervous. We being the other side, right? So when you see a man cry, you're like, oh shit. If it's during yeah. the Super Bowl, you're happy with them and yeah. you start crying too. If it's during a boxing match or whatever sporting event, right, right? Like that's what happens. But you see a guy crying at a funeral, you see a guy crying at work, or I mean, heaven forbid you see a male cry at work, right? Like, yeah. Right. But oh, when man. You do, it's he's like having a he's having a mental breakdown. Like right? that, that would be emotional. the first thing. Yeah. yeah. And that's the same thing, right? Like I, I think that does happen to women as well, right? Like, you know, especially in my field, uh, you know, it's a, it's a female-dominated field. Student affairs is a female-dominated field, um, which I say that knowing the uh, the lower and mid-levels are female-dominated, but the higher levels are male-dominated fields. Yeah. So we still know that. That's the whole male hierarchy and whatever. Anyway, <laughs> other other conversation about hierarchy. Yeah. Uh, but I think you're right that when you see when you see emotions in certain areas, it's not valid. And for yeah. women and men, it's it's not valid for different reasons. For women, they're too emotional. They're too this. They're too X Y Z. For men, you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. Like there's a disconnect. Men aren't supposed to have these emotions of sadness, of vulnerability, of anxiety. You're not supposed to have it because you're supposed to be the strong people. And, and again, gender yeah. roles like we we experience them by the binary but we experience them for different reasons. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, but then now like present day, we're telling, and this is one of the main reasons I opened my practice was that we're telling boys, you know, and, and young men to express all their feelings and all their emotions. And I think that's, that's kind of doing, you know, it's, it's doing a disservice. I really mm. do. I, I think we're not teaching boys. Okay. I mean, how to balance the two. You, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's not, you know, we can't tell the boys, okay, you need to be strong, 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 strong. And then say, you need to show your feelings. Like the, the way men, and, and, and I haven't heard this argument, you know, where we don't, we don't talk about how men deal with trauma, how men deal with, with um, hard situations. We're aggressive. We're going to, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be assholes to each other. We're, we're going to try to, to make other people feel that pain that we're feeling. So, if you make somebody that's overly emotional, how are they going to be prepared for that? When mm. other men that have been through trauma, where they're going to be aggressive, where they're going to show those kind of behaviors, are they going to be prepared for that life? And, th yeah. and that's, that's my big thing right now. It's like, we need, to, we need to have a balance. You can't just say, share your feelings. Like, whoa, you know? <laughs> yeah. I would also say too, I, I think a lot of it, at least for my work, because I mean, I focus on Latino young men right now, right? So a lot of that has to do with one, the, the cultural hierarchy, right? So for like what works for, for the dominant white male mm, doesn't yeah. work for other men. Yeah. Um, but then also too, I would say the standard is the male, right? Like we still live in a heteronormative, masculine dominant way. Um, and I think that's part of the confusion, right? So yeah. where, um, where therapy was, I mean, Freud, look at Freud, right? We, I mean, we all know Freud's problematic, but like, the, the beginning of psychoanalytic therapy was a white male talking to upper level women about their problems. And then he would say, you're hysterical, right? So, so yeah. we have to put that into the historical context too. Yeah. Uh, I think you're right is that, okay, so now we're at a point where we're, we're telling male, female and non-gender young, young people express all your feelings, right? But then what do you do with those feelings? Yes. And that's what I tell students now. Yes. Like, look, feelings are normal, right? They're natural. Happiness, sadness, frustration, anger, you know, joy, all that stuff's normal. It's what you do with them that make the better choice or not. Not right or wrong, but what you do with them that makes the best choice. So if I'm angry and I'm going to go to a staff meeting and punch the shit out of my boss, that's probably not the best choice. Yeah. But if I'm yeah. angry... And I'm going to kind of figure it out and then voice my frustration in, a, in this way that's productive. That might be the better choice. But I yeah. agree with you. Like, cause, cause now we're just talking about so much about emotions without, um, th there's a word that we use in higher ed and a lot of people use it actually, but resiliency, right? Yeah. Like, like Duckworth grit. Yeah. And that's right. what she was saying with grit. Like those people that have grit, they will survive. They will be successful. But how do we teach grit? Correct. And yes. I think that's where we need to go. Right. Yeah, I think I mean I I mean I loved her book. I I, I heard her her TED talk. It makes sense. Like it makes perfect sense. I mean that's, I mean look man, I I have you know, <laughs> dyslexia, speech impediment, all this stuff. You know, grew up in East LA, right. Alhambra, that kind of area. And if it wasn't for grit, man, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here at all. You know what I mean? Exactly. And, and so, 
And I think we're telling kids now, it's like, okay, well, I have all this oppression. I have all this stuff, so there's no way I can do it. And I, and I think that you're seeing, you're going to see a lot. And it's been increasing since, what, 2016 of suicide rates, all yeah. you know, anxiety, depression. is because we're not, okay, we, we understand that. Okay, but what now? Like, what do we do to overcome those type of, those type of challenges? You know, and, and I think one of the points you're, you're bringing up, it made me think, based on this project I'm doing and even based on maybe what you're doing is there's not enough examples either like we're not we're not we're not just teaching them we're not just uh not teaching them how to be gritty and how to do and how to learn this or how to control your emotions or you know uh behavior modifications if you will right there's also not enough examples correct like, and I yeah. think that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this because then it would give me an opportunity not, not that I am the only example but like yeah Let's talk because when I when I chat with these guys, I'm sharing my shit too, because yeah. that, that's the other part, right? Like in traditional therapy, um, you know, again, way school, uh, old school, but it's like you just talk about the client, right? Which is fine. That's what you need to do. But yeah. what, what I'm doing it's 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 creating a liminal space where I share as much as they do or more, so that we can create this new kind of partnership. Yeah, and I think that's what's needed too. Like they know, um, we were talking about that guy with. Um, you know, his father in a wedding. And I, I, I told him, like, you know, that I've only seen my dad cry, I think, two times. And both of those were at a funeral, one for his brother and one for his son. And even wow. when I graduated um, with my master's, I, I had to ask my dad, dad, are you proud of me? He's like, yeah, I guess so. But it's yeah. like the idea in, 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 in the, the participant, my little hermanito was like, dude, that sucks. I'm like, it did at that moment, but I also had to understand what – I can't expect my father who doesn't express his emotions and never learned how to do that and never taught how to do that to do that for me. Like I was taught how to do that. I was shown how to do that. I was shown how to do it. I can help him through his process, but him saying, yeah, I guess so really means, yeah, I am proud of you. Yeah. And accept that. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's hard, man. Cause you, are you the first one to graduate? Or, oh, or... Dude, I'm the first one in my little family to graduate high school. Yeah. Yeah. And I think with that part, especially especially coming from from that type of because I, I came from the same same type, right. I don't I don't think they really grasp what we did. You know what I mean? It doesn't. Oh, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? Like once yeah. once you pass, you know, your father, I I think it's um and, and it took me a while to process it. It's like they're 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 in fear for you. They're scared for you because they can't. They're not. No longer, they can no longer guide you. And I think right. it's that like, oh man, like. I'm worried you hear me because once I once I passed my dad it was just like hey man don't mess up don't mess up you hear me it wasn't because yeah. th there was there was nothing for, you know like I felt he felt that there was no way to guide me right. and so I don't I don't think they kind of grasp what's going on or they're fearful for us because this is the path that's not that hasn't been taken yet yeah, I think it's it's all new terrain right like we're trailblazers so then what happens when you're a trailblazer is you're often alone yeah and then, and then what do you do with that, right? Which is why, again, I think for me, like that mentorship is really important. However you do it, right? Like for young men, like they need mentors who are not just in their family, but, you know, yeah, like, hey, like you and I, Ronnie, like we, we both got uh, advanced degrees. Yeah, like, like so mentor, because I'm thinking about your mentoring program you, you started, like yeah. that's, that's why that is so important. Because no matter who you are, male, female, non-gender binary person, you know, whatever, you're going to need people you look up to, not just to look up to, but for advisement, for support and for yeah. like, Hey, can I make it through? Yeah. Oh, cause you did. All right, cool. Like yeah. you need those levels. So I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. How did you I think it's that? hard for our families? It's, it's hard, man. Cause it, it does, it's, it's hard to grasp. You know what I mean? Like, and yeah. especially when we grew up where we grew up and we, you know, there's a lot of like these great dreams and we see people that are super talented and super smart and they weren't able to, to, to get where they wanted to go but yeah. you were you know what I mean and, and so it's it's crazy because that's all they've seen they've just seen people like have these dreams and have these talents and something goes wrong and yeah. they and, and that's what I've seen through my experience of like they're 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 just they're they're concerned for you they don't know how to guide you there and and that's why they don't really grasp it so I mean that's my process in it because there's not a lot of literature on this man here <laughs> this is no like... i mean you're right there's not i mean you know after this we'll probably have to share some books <laughs> yeah yeah um, but i think you're right because it's like you know i grew up in san diego right by the tijuana border so of course like you know there, there's not a lot of people who are now like you know under 40 getting a phd that i grew up with right and, and then yeah. just the route that i took uh but i wonder too because what happens and this is what i tell students is 
once you're um, once you hit a level similar to what you're saying that your parents and even your father since we're talking about men and masculinity and all that stuff the feeling of they can't support you because you're in a whole new level i also think because you're in a whole new level there's certain expectations of you as a man now yeah like because because i was the first one i graduated high school and because i was the first one to go to college and then go to masters so now there's a whole other tribe of cousins and nephews and nieces who are like okay well you know if you want go ask Joel because he knows or yeah. go to, like, my cousin right my nephew right now is going to ucsd and and it's me trying to you know educate him on this is what an application looks like this is yeah. this this is yeah. what you're going to do and i think it's a whole new level of a part of being like that's now being a man like being a man is not just like you're there you're ha 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 no now you're teaching another person how to do it yeah and i think that's something that nobody talks about like you know I mean yeah. like we, we think this 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 uh this notion of being a man is being all about success and being on top of the what is it the mm. king of the hill right yeah nah i'm trying to dismantle that my goal yeah. is that everybody i'm i'm, I'm gonna be at the hill but I'm creating stairs for you. I'm creating ropes. I'm creating new ways for you to come up because I don't want to be the king of the hill. I want all of us to be on top of that hill. Yeah. And I think that's a new way that men are, are moving. At least that's what I hope. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's always been, I think the, the plan is like, you just try to bring people up with you, yeah. you know, and, and then, cause it's like, you know, you, you know, that's not manly, bro. That's not manly to bring people up with you. It's not, at least for me in the literature I read. Yeah. Our, our spec is not what's considered a traditional man. Yeah, I think I think we're challenging that because one, our culture, two, our experience, and then three, our non-traditional male traits. Yeah, yeah, it's man. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's just, it's interesting, man. Because yeah, and and it's, it's even thinking like why do this type of stuff? You know I mean like why even for me like why do a podcast? Why go right. into this field? Do all this stuff? And it, it's it's and and. I think about it, it's like if we don't do it who else like right. there's not a lot of people that look like us that have advanced degrees that have experiences that we have and it's just like okay who are we waiting for like who are we waiting for you know right. and so it's like hey we have to do this like I don't want to do this man like I always say like I don't want to do this like I'd rather just be at home hanging out with my kids <laughs> and doing stuff like that man but then I have that push like that push that you yeah. have like you need to fulfill something you need to you know I, I do a lot of uh read on the hero's journey you know and, right. and and that and that to me that's a huge huge thing it was it jason campbell like he yeah. like that it, it's interesting man you know so so i don't know man i mean i really like this discussion i think we should definitely do <laughs> talk about this more because isn't there again there's not a lot of stuff out here like on no, I, I think that's part of you know you i agree with you that the why we do the work we do right well if not now then when if not who then if not me then who yeah right? and yeah. i agree with you and i think a lot of that comes from our first generation responsibility like you know what i mean like i think it comes because we're like you know whether it's first generation college students or first generation immigrants or even second generation or culture but i think you know we we have we have that responsibility that that's what that's what it, it's, it's it's a drive it's a passion i do think it's a sense of responsibility to a community yeah, yeah. because I, and i'll be honest there's like in, in what I read, there's Latino, like Latino men are talking about this, um, but not at the rate of like, you know, there's how many books are there on Freud and how many books are there on, you know, passive aggressiveness for anybody, right? But like to centering male, maleness, male mental health, Latino mental health, black mental health, like yeah. there's not a lot, but they are, but there are still those that don't do this part. And I think that's the thing that's, that's missing. Like, like I need to chat with Ronnie. So then Ronnie can go and when he chats with his clients and his business and his things, he can do that. When I go to my healing circles and chat with my hermanitos, we can do that. Like it, it's create, it's the responsibility of creating the community of collective consciousness. That's really what it is. Yeah. And, and having this dialogue, like this is important stuff. Like it's important that we're talking about it because we get, you know, I think we get caught up on one side, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, whatever, you get to your side and that's it. Like, no, yeah. it's, we're at a point now where it's a, like, you just do the, you know, you try to pick the best, you know, um, thing for yourself. You know what I mean? You just like, you don't have to be all the way right or all the way left. It, it needs to be a constant discussion. You know, I mean, um, my, I mean, a lot of my opinions, opinions have changed over the past month. You, you hear know I me? Mean? Just by having this, you know, different types of dialogue, you know, and even, you know, just kind of thinking about what's going on. So um, I think we're at a point now where we need to start having dialogue and instead of saying like, oh, you're, 
I think this way and you think that way and then you're terrible. You right. know? <laughs> no, and I, I think you're right. I think it's a very, I mean, we're, we're politics is very devi- divisive right now. There's polarizing opinions. I think in terms of talking about in particular your, your, your research and my research about masculinity, like that now's a great time to talk about it. Because like, I mean, I look at it like, dude, Gillette, like, and I'm sure you've seen that commercial with Gillette. Oh man. Like, yeah. Like, you know, now it's not time for men to be men. Like we have to stand up and like they're watching. I'm like Gillette, a multi-billion dollar company, right? Probably, you know, the manliest company. They make razors for God's sakes, right? Like is now thinking, hey, men, we need to do better. Yeah. Now's the time to have these conversations. Now's the time to have these like dialogue. Yeah. And that's partly why I chose this because I'm like, there's something brewing, right? Not just this current Black Lives Matter re- revolution going on, not just that. That is great, that is awesome. But I also think these are times that our social consciousness is changing in what we think a man should be, what we think a woman should be, what yeah. we think we should be together or not together, or what do we think about gender. I mean, Bill Nye just said gender is fluid from a scientific point of view. Bill Nye, the science guy said that. Yeah. He's, like, he's like, our bodies have said that. Like, we already know. So I'm like, yeah, let's have these dialogues because I think with these yeah. dialogues, we expand our viewpoints. Exactly. And I complete, and I think totally different what you said. <laughs> well, and that's fine. We, like, and we need to talk about it. Like, we need to talk about Gillette. Like, how I just wanted to punch the screen, the, <laughs> punch my screen when I heard that. I was like, what are you talking about me? And then about like, you know, like, so... And and I think and it's okay and it's okay right. to think different and it's okay and you know what let's have a dialogue and then like huh my mind might change a little bit your mind change a little bit yeah. and and because or just even the plain fact of seeing the other person's point of view I think yeah. that that's what's what's most important of like why do you know okay well why do you think like that oh yeah could you explain to it ah, that makes sense this is why I think because of what I think oh okay that makes sense too ah you're not an a hole hey you're not an a hole either yeah <laughs> so I think that, and I think part of that dialogue, Ronnie, and I have to say this because we ha- we also have a history of respect. Yeah, and I think that's true. partly why some of the dialogues aren't happening the way in which you and I are suggesting they should. Is because you and I go way back, but it's it's not even just because we were classmates. Like we we have a mutual respect, and we've already had a conversation. We've broken the ice. Yeah, like you know, and I think that's hard for some people to, you know, it, I'm gonna own it. it. It's very hard for me to have a discussion of of critical thought and even just this with somebody who I don't feel either respects me as a person or like i'm not i'm not i'm not saying my piece to challenge you because i can never change somebody's mind like i already know that like i can't change i can't change your mind ronnie i can only give you opportunity to expand and think about your own process i think i think you can't but it it has to be it has i think what you talked about respect i think that has to be the thing because my my mind has been changed a bunch i've said some things like wow i shouldn't have said that or wow like but that's part of the process. So, but I remember things that I that I used to think, and other people think that way. You, right. you know what I'm saying? And so it's like, oh, I understand because I thought that way for you know for a couple of years. But it's it's being able to have dialogue. It's being able to respect that what that person is saying. And, and right. And I think that's my point. Like I, Joel, can't change your mind. You, Ronnie, through a conversation, mm. through an experience, through this, then you will, that allows you to have a new way of thinking, right? And I think that's that's the point I'm trying to say. Like, so when I go into these conversations, my goal isn't to change your mind. My goal isn't to do that. My goal is to express either some ideas, some thoughts, some po- beliefs, whatever I have, to help you if you want it, right? Yeah. And I think that's part of the polarization that everybody's kind of just their own fucking guard you mean yeah i think this way and that's it it's just like ah no yeah and and i get that too i really do right and especially now because there are some really bad things going on right there are some really bad things going on really bad things going on um but i think we can have conversations one of the challenges is having that mutual respect so for you and i and and all your 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 thing that's what i noticed throughout your podcast is that you do have a lot of respect for who you invite yeah no, absolutely. For somebody to share their their story, I mean that's always that's always a big thing. That's always the biggest for me. Like what I what I do is when people open up, like wow, that's it's a privilege, man. That's a privilege yeah. for people to open up their story to you and and trust you with that with that information. So, no, I, absolutely, man. But God, what do we have to do this again, man? And uh, yeah. and and uh, it's just kind of kind of have to get some time to think about what we just said so and i'm gonna replay so. it yeah no, let me let me, uh, let me finish the research <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but right. even but even we, you might even just do like you know we'll talk about the gillette 
commercial. Or we'll talk I am, about I am okay with that. We'll just, just dissect and, that. Yeah, because I, yeah, cause I, I think we have different point of views, but yet we respect each other. So we can, I think, talk about it. I don't think we're going to get too angry. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right, man. Well, I'm going to go ahead and, and do, yeah, we're going to have to do this again. Peace out, man. All right.